Welcome to the third video on the series on redox reactions. Today, we are going to look at oxidizing and reducing agents. We are also going to take a look at what are some examples of redox reactions and what are some examples that are not. In order for a reaction to be considered a redox reaction, oxidation and reduction must happen simultaneously. I would like to introduce to you two new terms, the term oxidizing agent and reducing agent. Basically, an oxidizing agent is a substance that causes another substance to be oxidized, while a reducing agent is a substance that causes another substance to be reduced. We use a simple example of the reaction between zinc and copper 2 oxide. If we apply the first definition of redox reactions, we look at oxygen, then zinc is oxidized because it had gained oxygen to form zinc oxide. Copper 2 oxide is reduced because it loses oxygen to form copper. So we have an oxidation reaction and a reduction reaction in the same equation. So this is a redox reaction. So what I've shown you below here is a simple structure that we can use to answer questions in exams. Given that zinc is oxidized, what causes zinc to be oxidized. It must be copper 2 oxide, right? So copper 2 oxide is the oxidizing agent while zinc is the reducing agent. The oxidizing agent is the substance that causes oxidation to take place. So if zinc is oxidized, copper 2 oxide must be the other one there that caused it. If copper 2 oxide is reduced, who could have caused it to be reduced? It has to be zinc. Because there are only two players in this equation. Okay, so if we look at this, we find that the substance that is oxidized is the reducing agent, or the substance that is reduced is the oxidizing agent. Now this part, if you are hearing it for the first time, it can be quite confusing. So you can pause the video and take some time to think about this. We can also look at this reaction in terms of oxidation state. The answer is the same. Zinc is oxidized. The oxidation state of the element zinc increases from 0 in Zn to plus 2 in ZnO. CuO is reduced as the oxidation state of copper decreases from plus 2 in CuO to 0 in Cu. Okay, so I want you to take note of how I fill in the blanks over here. For the chemical formula, you note that I'll just pull it off the equation. And we refer to the oxidation state, we try to be as clear as possible. We name the element rather than write its formula. Okay, and we always end off with the concluding statement. Since both oxidation and reduction occur simultaneously, it is a redox reaction. All right. We have already identified the oxidizing and reducing agent. I've put down the statements over here to help you. Over here, I have a reaction between copper 2 oxide and sulfuric acid. This is a neutralization reaction. And I would like you to think, is this a redox reaction or not? The easiest way to look at this is using oxidation state. The oxidation state of hydrogen is plus 1 in the compound. There are no hydrides. The oxidation state of oxygen is minus 2 in all of them. And for sulfur, if we do some calculations, this will be plus 6. It will be plus 6 here. Okay, this is the copper 2 ion, so it's plus 2. The oxidation states did not change. Therefore, this is not a redox reaction. Can you think of other examples that you have encountered before that are not redox reactions? The table below shows some common oxidizing agents and reducing agents. It is useful to know some of them and their color changes. The two most important ones that I would like to highlight in this video are potassium manganate 7 and potassium iodide. 
They are used to test for the presence of reducing agents and oxidizing agents respectively. If I have an unknown solution, how do I know whether it contains a reducing agent? Remember that a reducing agent causes something to be reduced. When potassium manganate 7 is reduced, there is a color change that can be easily observed. And this color change will tell us that a reducing agent was present. So the test is to add acidified potassium manganate 7. If a reducing agent is present, the purple solution turns colorless. Likewise, how do I know that an unknown solution contains an oxidizing agent? An oxidizing agent causes something to be oxidized. When iodide ions are being oxidized, there is a color change from colorless to brown. When a lot of iodine is being produced, sometimes you may see some black solids form. Now let's take some time to consolidate everything that we have learned in this chapter. I have four questions, and for each question, I would like you to make use of a different way of looking at redox reaction. For each question, I would like you to identify the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent, and to explain to me why this is a redox reaction. Pause the video, spend some time to complete this, and we'll go through the answers. In question 1, carbon monoxide gains oxygen, therefore it is oxidized. Iron 3 oxide is reduced to iron by losing oxygen. Since both happen simultaneously, it is a redox reaction. All right. When carbon monoxide is being oxidized, it means that the other substance must have caused it. So the oxidizing agent is iron 3 oxide. In the second reaction, chlorine gains hydrogen to form HCl, therefore chlorine is reduced. Reduction is the gain of hydrogen. N2H2 loses hydrogen to form N2, therefore it is oxidized. Since chlorine is reduced, it is the oxidizing agent. N2H2 must be the reducing agent. Question number 3. Magnesium forms the Mg2 plus ions by losing electrons. This is oxidation. Fluorine gains electrons and is reduced, forming F minus. The oxidation half equation will be magnesium becoming Mg2 plus. Two electrons are lost. Fluorine gains electrons to form fluoride ions. Magnesium is being oxidized, so what causes it? It must be fluorine, therefore magnesium is the reducing agent. The last example requires us to look at oxidation states. Before we begin, we have to assign oxidation numbers to all the elements. K plus, I minus, these are ions, element 0, K plus, Cl minus, element 0. Ki is being oxidized as the oxidation state of iodine increases from minus 1 in Ki to 0 in I2. Cl2 is reduced as the oxidation state of chlorine decreases from 0 in Cl2 to minus 1 in KCl. Since oxidation and reduction happens simultaneously, it is a redox reaction. We will leave out the spectator ions for the half equations here. The oxidation half equation will be from iodide ions becoming iodine. Balance the equation. And we see that oxidation is the loss of electrons. Chlorine gains electrons to form chloride ions. 
and this is a reduction reaction. The oxidizing agent is Cl2, while the reducing agent is Ki. So that brings us to the end of the basics on redox reactions. Thanks for watching.